We are anonymous. We have revealed the shocking truth about CERN, and this is a topic that you all have to learn. To be aware of the dangers that are near. Take note, this is not meant to scare or intimidate anyone. This is to inform everyone so we may be able to stop this from happening. So you all need to open your heart, ears, and eyes on what the collective has to present to you. This very urgent message. Are we months, years away from understanding the that's next a, dimensions? That's a really great question. It turns out that there will be an accelerator. So an accelerator, particle accelerator, yeah, accelerates yeah. protons to enormously high energy. And there's going to be a new one that turns on, it turns on in 2007, but really will begin operation in 2008. It's called the Large Hadron Collider, yeah. the LHC. It's going to be at an accelerator facility called CERN, near Geneva. The world's largest the world's atom smasher. questions of our universe. It's a puzzle that's challenged scientists, scholars, and the and it was hailed as one of the most significant scientific experiments in history. Well, now the Large Hadron Collider is getting a new piece of kit. Scientists described it as an upgrade comparable from going from a Morris Minor car to a Formula One car. Physicists believe they have finally found the Higgs boson. The initial discovery of the so-called God particle was first announced last July. The Higgs boson. So far, an elusive factor that in theory holds matter together. The collider near Geneva, Switzerland crashed two proton beams into each other at three times more force than ever before. And we are privileged, privileged to witness this, this event in it happening right before our eyes. We are in some sense recreating the process of creation itself. I mean, does it lead you to believe that, damn it, it's not, it's, we're, we're, we're just, we're just a small part of something very big. Just a final thought, because you came up with a lovely line uh, talking to our producer saying, nature is tricky to understand. Every time you peel back a layer, the universe presents you with something else that you don't understand. That's absolutely true. The Large Hadron Collider was uh, designed to replicate conditions seen shortly after the Big Bang. It broke down, though, soon after it was switched on in 2008. But we'd also learned that nature is a real tease. Because, <laughs> the title of your next book, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> right, that uh, there seem to be all these hints that, that we can put it together into a beautiful package and understand things more deeply, maybe learn about the the dark matter. I hope that the LHC will, will take us beyond. Professor Stephen Hawking say that uh, we might just be around the corner from having a theory of everything. In my experience that hasn't been the case. Every time we reveal something that we didn't know before, suddenly there are more unanswered questions. And by the way, the next step beyond the Higgs boson is to find dark matter. We know that most of the universe is actually invisible. It keeps the Milky Way galaxy together, in fact. So there's quite a lot of evidence for dark matter. If you look at the way galaxies rotate, they, they don't really fit in a model of the evolution of the universe if there's no dark matter. What's remarkable is you can build a self-consistent model of how the universe has evolved with just one type of dark matter. Uh, human beings like to be more on the control side. Uh, is the possibility of, for example, creating dark matter in the lab. Of then there's the question of why is there more matter than antimatter in the universe? This is really the speciality of the LHCb experiment. Um, at the Big Bang, there should have been equal amounts of matter and antimatter created, and yet there's, there's matter left over, which is good, we're here, it's, it's a good thing, but we don't really understand why. Now they hope the study will bring new insights into the nature of the cosmos and how it all came into being. So we don't understand what, what, what their matter is made of. We know it has to be something beyond what we know. And we don't understand why we are here. And we know that there must be something beyond what we know to explain that we are here. Okay, so I think that the LHC um, will uh, for sure shed some light.
when people say that it's it's a leap forward from Morris Minor to Formula One car, are, are they right? Is it of that magnitude? The technology has come on in leaps and bounds, as one would expect for uh, frontier science. But one thing that really struck me is how much the search for the Higgs boson captured the public's imagination um, to a significant extent, really. I mean, there was journalists from all over the world kind of uh, queuing up to, to report on it. What? This gets to your question of whether this is a special time in history. I think it's a very special time in history. Uh, it's as if uh, we're fish who've uh, suddenly discovered that they live in water. Why do you think that that was the case? I, I don't remember a, a, a scientific event that caught the public's imagination to that level for a very long time. And Jerome Friedman, your former colleague at MIT, I think said that if, uh, if we see evidence of what has been proposed by you, it will be extraordinary, it will shake up everything. <laughs> it's pretty good. That would be pretty good. I mean, it, it's true. I mean, it could be that we need to get to a little bit higher energy to learn more. But right now, we think we will definitely learn something at the energies that we will explore. But there could be even more exotic phenomena, really like higher dimensional. It a, it's a really incremental step. It's not incremental in the sense that it's seven times the energy of current accelerators. So it really is the right energy to probe these questions. It's just that if you get a little bit more energy, you might learn a little more, for example. If you get to even higher energies, you might be able to make higher dimensional black holes if this idea is right. So there are new things that could occur with higher energy. But we expect, we do expect, to be able to know the answers to these questions from the Large Hadron Collider. I don't, just want to clarify. What's likely to be another dimension? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, there are four dimensions. What's, yes. What would be a fifth? What would be well, a sixth? Art makes life worth living. Because via art, I think we can discover beauty. Whereas science makes us live free. Because only with science and applying logic and uh, requiring proof, we can, not, we can be free from swallowing any rubbish propaganda. So I work at CERN. So many years, I never noticed all these things are so beautiful. But I just want to show you some of the pictures here so that you can see how we at CERN took uh, some photos and you look at them and you are ému. <laughs> you are sort of moved because they contain worlds within the simple photographed item. Uh, you can see things that are there from reflection in the grass. You can see a ladder that goes to heaven. There is such a majority of devotion to the projects that it's sort of sublimination de l'environnement. De so you can see several of them where you, you have the impression that it's like the end of the world as we know it. LINAC 2 dates back to the 1970s, so the technology that's been used for LINAC 4 is considerably more advanced. Uh, it allows you to control those proton beams much more precisely and uh, uh, also gives you control over m much greater quantities of protons, which is what you need for investigating the, the experiments that they have on the Large Hadron Collider. Where we're exploring the mysteries of matter. Now, the LHC is a particle accelerator. It's the largest, highest energy particle accelerator in the world. We're talking about a machine that'll take us right to the, the beginning of time itself. There will be people who try to piece out from it what were the different, they'll test the different ideas. So lots of people have suggested what might be there. But generally they're going to look for energetic particles, they're going to see where did they come from, what could have been, what, what was producing whatever they found. Because when you're talking about a technology like this or about geoengineering, this is something where 
even beginning to do the work in the laboratory means you are making a decision that could affect people outside the laboratory. And if you do that work behind closed doors, and make no mistake, virtually all of science is kept secret from everybody until the moment of publication, because the incentive system is set up such that if you tell somebody else your genius idea, some other lab is going to go off and do it, rush it, publish first, they get all the credit, you get none. This is an insane way to set up your scientific system. No one in their right mind building it from scratch would say we should do it this way. And yet we do, because that's the way it al we have always done it. It never worked great even before the cost of sharing information went to zero. But if you want to engage with a community, how can you do that if you're only telling them what the technology is when you've already gotten it working? Then it's too late. Then you're going to the FDA for regulatory approval. You get the public comment period. But no matter what people say, you can't do anything. It's too late. Done. Finished product. We are anonymous. President Donald Trump faced near certain death after the presidential motorcade he was riding in was targeted by Antifa, with Trump being placed in grave danger due to his Secret Service protectors placing him in one of the Roadrunner SU verses, instead of his presidential state car that's able to withstand the blast that would have occurred should this attack been successful, and that was, also, captured on video. There's the beast. Oh, no, oh my gosh. Look at that car that just came out of the woods. Oh. That, car, dude. that car right there just drove out of the woods. The SVR is authorized under Federation law to conduct widespread surveillance on any designated group in the world, and which Antifa was so designated, on the 12th of June 2017, by the state of New Jersey Office of Homeland Security who labeled them as being a domestic group, and that led to the SVR's shocking discovery earlier this month that these Antifa were being trained in Venezuela, as it pertains to the attempted takeout of President Trump. SVR surveillance of Antifa operating in the state of Missouri, known as Kansas City Antifa, showed large numbers of them being employed by Google Fiber, and whose location is in a building located at 908 Broadway, in downtown Kansas City, where, also, Antifa frequently hold meetings. The SVR expressed grave alarm when two vehicles owned by Google Fiber left Kansas City and arrived in Springfield, Missouri at a telecommunication company called the Base Pro Shop Call Center where they were contracted to do work, and that was located in a hidden-slash-secretive position adjacent to President Trump's motorcade route, following established protocols when discovering an apparent attack ready to occur in another nation's territory. The SVR contacted the Minister of Foreign Affairs whose responsibility it is to notify foreign nations, which in this case was the United States and whose presidential protective forces were able to thwart this attack when, after the Antifa bomb-carrying vehicle made its attack run, it was quickly disabled by one of Americans' Viper vehicles. In a quick cover-up of the stakeout attempt against President Trump, the mainstream propaganda U.S. news media immediately blacked out this event from being able to be known by the American people with only a bare handful of local media reports even reporting IT all of whom lied with their saying that the Centavia attack vehicle was just a car that lost control of its brakes, and it occurred at the exact same time President Trump's vehicle was in its sights. As to why the multi-billion international tech giant Google would want to take out President Trump, is due to their fears that Trump is preparing to file an antitrust complaint against them in order to break up their monopoly and that is following the European Union's successful fight against this mammoth evil giant, that has, so far, cost Google over $3 billion in fines for its abuse of dominance. Failing in their attempt to take out President Trump by using their Antifa, Google then went on a rampage against all of their enemies, 
the most noted being their threat to cut off funding, estimated at $21 million a year, from the highly influential think tank New America Foundation unless they immediately fire their Google experts who are the most experienced in the world as to how this evil giant runs their monopoly and has corrupted the entire U.S. government structure. Upon the New American Foundation firing all of their expert s knowledgeably about this evil giant, Google, one of these researchers fired back a warning to the American people. What Google did, in attempting to silence my colleagues, was in fact a call to action. It is a call to action for all of us, as citizens, to take back our democracy. We must begin a new era of trust busting, of public utility regulation, of free and open commerce, and of citizen engagement in our political and commercial spheres. Our team was attacked by Google, but we will not be silenced. We will continue our research, advocacy, and speaking, because we know that it is working. This is a battle for America, and for free people everywhere. We must win it. We are winning it. Our freedom and our children's freedom, depends on it. To how grave this battle of the American people against Google really is, cannot be underestimated as this evil giant, is now, also, reported to being pouring billions of its dollars into U.S. collages and universities in order to corrupt them all, with one example being their multi-million dollar support of Dartmouth College lecturer Mark Bray who wrote a document titled Antifa, the Anti-Fascist Handbook, and when condemned by Dartmouth President Philip Hanlon for his advocating violence, Google ordered hundreds of professors to write a letter calling for Hanlon's immediate ouster, not the Antifa supporting Mark Bray. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive.